Hello and welcome to Keto and Fasting Seminar. Um, we're going to wait a few minutes for people to come in and join. And if you guys can hear me okay, you can see the slides. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so uh, I will get started. Uh, first introductions about me. All right, I am a software engineer at Silicon Valley for 12 years. I studied Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in Computer Science at Iowa State and then USC in my master degrees. So I enrolled at IIN Institute of in Integrative Nutrition last year. And uh, I'm passionate about health and fitness. That's why I enrolled in this school, health coaching school. And uh, I want to make a change in the world so people can really eat healthier, be happier, live longer, not on the drugs and not being tricked by the pharmaceutical company industries and our food industry. Um, so an, a little disclaimer here, we're not here to diagnose you, treat you, or prevent any medical conditions. Um, anything is for your research purpose, so um, that's a little disclaimer here. All right, let's move on. So what is your story? How did you get here? How did you, did you stumble upon keto and intermittent fasting in your life? Did you want to lose weight or did you want to cure some disease that you had? Did you want to just feel better, eat healthier? Did you want to get rid of your medications? How did you get here? Because everyone has their own reasons and everybody is different okay so keto and intermittent fasting you have to figure out if this is for you okay i'm not here to tell you to do this this is the only way to do it you have to try it out and see if this is something that you like if not you can find out what part of it that you like or what part of it that you didn't like and you can take or give part of the things that you like or you used to like and then kind of mix it around so understand what is your story what is your background and what is your goal okay all right, let's start. What is ketosis? Ketosis is a process where your body is burning fat for fuel. It produces something called ketones. Okay, so when you're in a state where your body is producing ketones, that means your body is burning your fat for fuel, not your glucose. So everybody has a certain a, a tank that contains glucose. Once you burn it out, you're going to start tapping into your fat resource and you're going to start burning your fat. This is very high level of explanation. There's a lot of uh, doctors that would go much more deeper in explanation in a medical term, but this is a very high level of understanding. Okay. And then you are able to measure, are you in ketosis and what is your ketone level using a blood testing device. There are a couple out there and there are more right now. K 
keto, keto mojo and precision extract. They will tell you a range of whether you're in ketosis or not. Um, the higher, the better. I think four is the maximum. Uh, it starts from zero to four. So I think the ideal number for ketosis is 0 0.5 to 4. 4 means you are deeply in ketosis, okay? And after, after 0 0.5, it's pretty good, you know, when you're in 1 or 2, that's a good, that's a good place to be in. However, you don't want to use a lot of the exogenous ketones to measure because that wouldn't make sense because you are measuring what you take into. A lot of the MCT oil or exogenous ketones, if you take them and you measure, you're actually measuring how much that you took, you're not from your own body producing ketones, if that makes sense. Okay? So, how do you get into the ketosis? So basically, it's a high fat, low carb, moderate protein diet. It goes about 75% fat, 5% carb, 20%, 15 to 20% of protein. Depends on your goal, your body, muscle size, your daily activities. But that's the general range. Okay, so what what is what is the hype about? You know all these miracles that we heard. Keto can reverse insulin resistance, cure diabetes, cure your thyroid, cure your um, adrenal glands. Um, intermittent fasting with ketosis can cure all those. Is that true? I have to say, according to a lot of research and a lot of live people's reports, it did help a lot of people. But does it work for you? You have to try and find out. However, I can say that what causes diabetes is too much blood sugar in your bloodstream that is diabetes right you have too much blood sugar in your bloodstream and your insulin resistance meaning uh, is insulin keep pumping pumping and it keeps trying to take out all the blood sugar and then eventually insulin wears out it doesn't know pancreas doesn't know oh should i release or not it just it's 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 worn out that's what is insulin resistance. So when you get to insulin insulin resistance, that's the pre-diabetes symptoms because it doesn't know when to take out the blood sugar. So it results in really high blood sugar in your bloodstream. So that's why when you measure your blood uh, testing, A1C, HA1C, it's really high because you have all the sugar floating in your blood. And um, what, what causes high blood sugar? Constant eating, right? Whatever you eat, it got converted into glucose, whether it's protein, carbs, Fat, not so much, but it's still a little bit, okay? So constant eating, you create this blue glucose in your sugar, and also eating carbs. Carbs get translated into blue sugar, uh, blood sugar the fastest among protein and fat. There's also a glycemic index chart indicates how fast a type of carb gets translated into glucose the fastest the worse like white bread sugar those things they will spike your blood sugar 
which results in insulin resistance. So carbs will get digested and translated into glucose. So is protein, but protein is slower. So is fat. But fat has really little glucose. Uh, it, it won't impact your blood sugar uh, because it has no carbs. So there are a lot of keto eating styles out there. There's keto carnivore, vegan keto, dirty keto, modified keto, car carb cycling, target keto, so on and so forth. There's probably more that I didn't put into the slides. But first of all, let's let's think about why is there so many type of keto? If there's just one keto, right? Why is there so many type of keto? Keto just high fat, low carb, moderate protein. Why is there so many variations? Do you remember the second slide that I show you? What is your story? Because everybody is different. Everybody is different. And when keto got, um, got into one person's hand, he modifies it little bit to a style that fits for him and somebody took keto another way and modify it a little bit and turn into another way that works for him for women maybe i take two of them and then mix it around i created a third flavor and that works for me so you see why there's so many different type of styles out there so I'll ex go ahead and explain a little bit of them just to let you know what are the flavors out there. Keto carnivore. So carni carnivore by its name meaning you're only eating animal meats. No vegetables, no fiber. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. You know why that works? because you're not eating junk food there's no cheetos okay there's no ice cream there is no oreos okay that's why keto carnivore works for a lot of people it is claimed that people who cannot digest vegetables very well or high fiber Burr kind of irritates some people's gut. Um, they are better off without eating vegetables, so keto carnivore would really work for them. But you have to watch out to keep your protein at moderate level because a lot of the meats are high in protein, low in fat, and too much protein will spike your blood sugar and um, we don't want that whenever you spike blood sugar you spike your insulin insulin is gonna store that fat so that's keto carnivore there's also vegan carnivore that is opposite to carnivore right it's only eating vegetables so how how can you eat vegetables and say in ketosis you can but it's very difficult because all the vegetables have carbs so you will have to eat very limited type of vegetables keep your fat really high and the protein you can get it from mushrooms spinach and no beans you can get it from the vegan protein powders that are plant-based. So it's going to be a little bit trickier. It's going to be harder than the traditional keto. But it, it is doable. 
So people, people who are in beliefs that they cannot eat animals or um, a lot of religions that you can't eat pork, beef, lamb, um, those kind of people and also who are just vegan, they want to go into keto, they can do this, but it's going to be uh, a lot of challenge because you ruled out a lot of keto foods in in general. Okay, so third one, dirty keto. Ooh, what is that? So that means there's clean keto, right? If there's dirty, then there's clean. What is dirty? That means you are eating anything that is no carb. You really don't care the quality where it comes from, right? You just munch on things that has no carb, but you don't care. It is it is going to do your body good. For example, a lot of... um protein chips they are low carb but if you look at the ingredients they are made of made out of soy isolates whey protein um, those things will irritate your gut those are really processed also pasteurized cheese um, what else just uh, like like ground beef in general, not even organic, not even organic pasture raised. Um, those animals are really sick and just filled with hormones and antibiotics. Those are sick animals. And then dirty keto, it just go out to even fast food places where they serve those sick animals. And they claim, say, it is keto because... It is chicken. Chicken has no carbs. But those chickens are really sick. They grow up in a very sick environment. That's how the fast food, fast food, fast food place can keep the price really low. And um, I wouldn't advise that because it's just not do your body good. So clean keto is the opposite. You really look into the ingredients, the quality, and you eat for its nutrition level okay and then there's modified keto what does that mean that means you uh, modify the keto to your needs so some people who are more athletic they might be Ironman they might be doing triathlon they might be doing bodybuilding CrossFit they are really um, doing very taunting jobs, body work jobs, then they might be interested in modified keto, which is still high fat, but they might be adjusting the carbs a little bit, adjusting the protein a little bit to their body needs. And depends on the days, right? Maybe the days they are more crazy, taking kids to soccer practice, um, they have meetings all day and then going to the gym. That day they might be needing more protein than the days that resting days they might be a, a less protein. For or if they are going to an hour long bike ride, they might need a higher carb that day than the other days. So modified keto is a more flexible keto depends on your day of activities your feeling your feeling and um, how are you using the energy in general okay so it's not a strict rule it really it really um, bend the, the ruler a little bit to suits your need and also there's carb cycling so people who um, do a lot of the long endurance type of exercise. They like to do a high carb day and a low carb day. So they can utilize their glucose to the best to fuel their muscle and um, 
build their muscle. So it's it's different goals for them. Um, for a lot of people, they just want to be in ketosis to be healthy, not burning glucose, burning your own body fat because it's a cleaner fuel. You can feel better the longer you don't you won't feel hungry and hangry at the same time. So a lot of people that's our goal. So that's fine. So remember to find your own keto. Okay, definitely play around with it, and um, don't feel bound by this rule seventy-five, five, and twenty. Okay. Also, I want to talk about this organic versus conventional、uh, concept. It also brings up a a little thing that we just talked about: dirty and clean keto. So. Right now, organic is a boom. Right, everything has to be organic. But why? Why is it that we're paying more for something called organic, and we don't even taste the difference? Right, I don't even really know that my body is feeling better, or like I I don't I can't see why am I paying something that I don't even know I will feel better. Well, first of all, conventional produce can be GMO, genetically modified organism, which, like the name says, it is not what it was. They are injected with things that modify their DNA, so they are sweeter, they are bigger, they are stronger, they are. They are just like they are just weird organ. Like they are not their original state. A lot of the vegetables that we have nowadays was not like that twenty, thirty, fifty years ago. They all look different now, and then some of them even taste different. Our soils are depleted with nutrients. And with all the chemicals we have around now, with all the all the the、uh, toxic that we have now, they the the farmers have to put a lot of pesticides and grow those GMO things to keep their products strong and keep on going. So that's that's how it is. It's very sad. And not just GMO, they put they spray pesticides. Fungicide. I don't know what's there. Are like tons of different some sides in them, and we're eating those, right? We're eating those in our body. Those are supposed to keep the bugs away, kill the bugs, and then we're eating those. Well, we are not bugs, but for sure, it's not doing our body any good. That's conventional. So, organic is definitely a better choice. We spend a little bit more, but I think in the long run it will save our medical bill. Okay, so organics are、uh, a lot of them are non-GMO already, but we have to look at the label to make sure it's non-GMO and organic. But organic still being sprayed with organic pesticides. It's not like they're not sprayed at all. But they are less harmful to our body,、um, and、um, they are organic pesticides. So、um, a lot of people now go shop at farmers market or grow your own produce. That's definitely nothing sprayed. Um, so yeah, those are all the options if you really want to be careful about the quality of your produce. Next, we want to talk about all other keto-friendly foods: dairy, nuts, seeds, lactose foods, and coffee. So dairy is definitely in a lot of keto recipes. They are high in protein. Low in carbs and high in fat, but 
we have to look at the sources of the dairy. Are the dairy uh, organic pasture raised? Also, if the dairy, the form, the dairy that you are eating, whether it's cheese or cream cheese or cottage cheese, are they pasteurized? So pasteurized means they, the milk is killed, is is taken out all the bacteria. But we really want the good bacteria to grow in our gut. So when it's pasteurized, there's nothing left, right? But not a lot of the uh, states sells raw milk or even raw cheese. There are, but it's harder to find because there's also risk and the danger of eating raw milk and raw cheese. So I wouldn't recommend eating dairy cheese so much. They just irritate the gut. And to be honest, we're not we're not cow descendant. I mean, our parents are not cows. Why are we eating cow's milk, right? Like cow's milk is for cow babies. So um, I like ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. Um, it is butter, but it has taken out all the lactose, which is milk sugar. But of course, you're getting organic grass-fed ghee. Um, a lot of people like cheese and cream cheese and heavy cream, things like that. Little amount is okay, but I really wouldn't recommend you eat it so often and so much. There is a lot of replacements now. Non-dairy, you can use almond milk, coconut milk, um, flax milk, um, plant-based milk. There's so many alternatives now that you can look into. Oh, okay, so there's nuts. Nuts are good. However, there's a lot of carbs in them. Even in the peely nuts, uh, macadamia nuts, pecans, they are very easy to eat. So it's really hard to, to eat just one serving. And um, it's and also they are crunchy, they are salty. Uh, it's very easy to accidentally eat a whole bag, which that might be over your carb count for a day or so. And uh, if you're eating nuts, make sure they are sprouted, meaning they are soaked overnight, and um, either they're dry roasted or you bake it in the oven to dry it out, but make sure they are sprouted. Seeds are the same. You make sure they're sprouted and um, they are very high calorie dense. So just like 28 grams, it's 200 calories. Um, a lot of fat and protein, that's true, but for a little amount, it's very calorie dense. Now there is also called lectin foods. I don't know if you are aware of Dr. Gundry's um, concept of lectins. It means a lot of the vegetables, they want to fight off their, their self-protecting mechanism. They don't want to be eaten. So they have their own poison in it. It's called lectins. That if human eats, it's gonna uh, irritate our gut. Some of them will make us feel sick, will have allergic response because that's how the plants want to protect themselves and spawn off their own uh, children, their, their seed. A lot of the nice shades are lectin foods and a lot of um, vegetables that have seeds, they are lectin foods. So um, you can look into that. We don't recommend eating lectin foods so much, but you can try it out, yeah. Also coffee, it's a big, big subject. If you're drinking one or two cups a day or even one pot a day, 
that's going to be a problem. First of all, coffee, coffee really irritates your um, adrenal gland. So it really pushes your cortisol and say, okay, you know, stimulate your cortisol and say, ready to get up and start working. So you have this energy kind of feeling, but they are not your real energy. They're from the coffee. And we don't really want that. We want our body to produce its own energy. And also coffee is a diuretic. Have you ever feel that once you have a coffee, you want to go to a restroom? Yeah, because coffee, um, it was a medicine, ancient medicine they used to do like um, uh, for curing your bowel disease or um, it was a medicine before. So if you really want to have coffee, I would say try um, Tocino. It is a caffeine-free tea. It tastes like coffee. Um, you can slowly swap into Tocino and swap out of coffee. Um, okay, so that is a long talk about ketosis. Next, we want to talk about intermittent fasting. It's also called time restricting eating. Basically, it's just the meal timing, right? When are you eating instead of what you're eating? A lot of people practice 12 to 16 hour uh, fasting, which is the minimum fast. And uh, the rest of the time, they eat three meals, no snacks, or two meals, no snacks. Um, so you can spread out as far as you like, or you like you can squeeze them as close as you like. The purpose of intermittent fasting is to deplete your glycogen. So when you're fasting, you're burning your glycogen, and then hopefully you burn it out, and you can start tapping into your fat storage. A lot of people are also wondering, aren't you going to be short of all the minerals because you're not eating anything? Well, the thing is, when you are fasting, your body knows how to get um, like nu nutrients from yourself. Well, there's some uh, minerals that you cannot get from your own body. You have to take them. But a lot of the, say, uh, a lot of the vitamins that the body can generate itself without hurting it. So um, magnesium, omegas, potassium, those are the things that potassium you can get it from food, but we also want to supplementing when you're intermittent fasting. Men versus women, do they fast differently? I would have to say yes, because Man doesn't have to carry a womb. They don't have um, breast to breastfeed, you know, babies. Their muscle size are different. Their hormones are different. So um, they definitely fast different. Okay, so for women, if you're pregnant, you are older you're younger definitely play around with all those keto um, styles that you see so for fasting women you want to fast at least 12 hours and then you can play around with the number of hours that you fast also depends on how busy you are don't force yourself like if you're hungry and then if it's not just a short sensation of hunger, it's like a constant hunger, you can even take your mind off it, then it's time to break your fast. Um, how about exercise during fasting? Yeah, there is a lot of exercise 
style there there's high in intensity interval training low intensity steady cardio like walking uh, weight training functional training body weight exercise trx functional training um etc depends on your age your flexibility your um energy level try to do these try to exercise two to three times a week minimally you can also do yoga tai chi um whatever suits you your bodies your body are meant to be moved okay you really want to move your body to get your oxytocin up so your body really creates that happy satisfied feel also there's a lot of um myth about calories in calories out energy balance it does not really matter when you're doing keto and intermittent fasting i it is really a a big topic now some people say yes calories still matters come somebody some people says no i don't really have an answer for this according to dr jason fun he says calorie doesn't matter because insulin really your calorie count doesn't count into your hormones your insulin but also there are exper experiments with people done they eat 5000 calories a day keto but at the end of a month they gain weight right so there there really isn't um like a free calorie you still have to balance uh what you eat but you don't have to really count it right you can eat until you're satisfied eat the right foods and you don't have to worry about calories because think about it we are the only animals on the planet earth at calculating our calories but how do you know how much calorie that you spent a lot of the website they tell you or oh, you're how old you are how much weight and you burn that much but how do they know the those weights that you entered how much of them are muscle and then how do they know that you pick up kids today you walk how long today you work you know standing today you you do what today and how much your digest how fast your digestion how fast is your metabolism how does it know it doesn't know so how do you know how much calorie you spend a day right and also when is the when is the clock off time of a day like does your body resets every at the midnight your body says oh 18000 calorie all gone today is from now on whatever you eat starts from a new 1800 calorie cycle when is the right end time of a calorie when is the start time of a calorie so calorie in a concept is really strange okay so i would say count your macros but don't count your calories okay if that makes sense so finally with all these things keto and intermittent fasting are they right for you you really have to play around with it because there's so many different variation um, everybody is different what is your story right okay thank you very much for dial me, dialing in um, my information is uh, everydaylotus.com that's my website my facebook page healthcoach.iin instagram is everydaylotus.iin i have a youtube channel 
It's called Cindy Xu C H C. My email Cindy Xu at protonmail.com. I'm gonna take in some questions now. If you have any questions, feel free to type in in the comments here.